and the video we've been waiting for. Imagine you're stumbling upon this one and this is the first one you see, as opposed to the second one, which everyone saw before the first. It doesn't really make a ton of sense. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Megan, and if you're new here, my name is actually Alex. Someone on Twitter told me that that joke was like dead and old and I need to be done, and I was like, Sit down, Becky. So this is my hacking part three video. If you haven't seen the other two parts, I will link them down below. I did post a update, like a screenshot of my notes app, like you know what celebrities do when they like say racist things or something leaks online of them that's like really bad. You know, they do like a screenshot of the notes app. So I did that with my part three update and I, I do realize that two left it on a cliffhanger so I should conclude it here. But Lily is not editing this <laughs> nor is she producing it. So this is gonna be much more low key. So a couple of days after I posted part two, Lily got a message from Shane and Shane had gotten a message from someone he knows that works high up at YouTube asking for my contact info to try and like get on a call and solve everything. And so Lily gave my contact info to Shane and Shane gave my contact info to this person who works at YouTube and we ended up having a video chat call the next morning, which was a Saturday, which I will say is like night and day from not getting a response during like work hours and no one even wanting to get on a call to then have Having someone who's going to like video chat me on a Saturday morning that was fantastic so before getting on the call I agreed that it would be confidential and everything we discussed that was sensitive or confidential would remain confidential and I'm upkeeping that and I want to say as much as that sounds I don't know sketchy or whatever everything that I was told on the call is confidential it's not like some secret information that will prevent other creators from being hacked or what happened in the system and how they can surpass it and fix it this faster. It was very much the fact all of the issues that had gone wrong with my specific case and the fact that because they all went so drastically wrong in my case, they're not going to be able to go wrong again because they're changing everything. If this call had been my first interaction with YouTube about this whole thing, this would have changed my tune completely. They assumed responsibility. They admitted that it was their fault, which, you know, was very different than the deleted tweet of um, YouTube liaison. Who's flying on a plane? We're on lockdown. They accepted responsibility building they accepted fault for everything that happened and they apologized which you cannot underestimate the satisfaction and the feeling of someone admitting like oh that was my fault you weren't in the wrong at all wow I could bask in this feeling forever I was told that nobody is robots it is all sourced other places and they're reading from templates and even they said on the call they were like these templates need to be rewritten cool great positive change but I do want to focus on the parts of the call that I think are the most important for this whole process and this whole time I've been saying I want to have a meeting at YouTube I want to talk to these people I want to talk to the people who I dealt with and also just the teams who do this and help them do it better because it's not just happening to me it's happening to smaller creators and it's the most like rip your hair out frustrating feeling ever and I said that to this person they were like yeah we would love to have you come in we'd love for you to meet with this team and discuss with us and really talk to everybody how we can do better and what's what this system needs to be like and we'll go over how it failed you and all of that stuff and I was like I'm sorry, what? I can have a meeting? And obviously in light of uh, world events that are absolutely terrible, that's you know far, far, far in the future. So that's already two of the things that I had said I wanted accomplished. One, a meeting at YouTube, soon to happen. And two, a new system in place for creators when they've been hacked. And a whole system figuring that out and just changing that. And from what I was told on the video call, both of those things are going to happen. Now onto the not. <laughs> good part which is the vlogs that's what I wanted that's all I cared about at all in this whole process like obviously it was like maddening and really frustrating to be treated this way and feel like I was getting gaslighted by YouTube the vlogs are what I wanted I've been super transparent from the start that I don't want to post on that channel anymore the channel was dormant I wasn't uploading there regularly and I had no plans to upload there regularly but I just wanted my content and I wanted my videos and a lot of people were confused from part two because they they thought when I had said that YouTube had offered to do um, a mass upload of my archive I specified that in the video but I think a lot of people still didn't understand they don't have the archive that's as if I had a backup of every single one of my videos and I had my own archive if I had my own archive I could send it to them and they would re-upload them all at once like a mass upload so it would just be faster but yeah I don't have a backup of all of my vlogs and that sucks and that's terrible I got a lot of criticism from people and it's like I know 
of course I know. But you also have to understand how long I've been on YouTube. People weren't making money when I started. That wasn't a thing. It was just videos to upload with your friends. You wouldn't treat it like a job essentially until it really became a job. And it was my second channel. I have a backup of all of my videos on this channel, or at least like they're the ones I don't have. I'm like, it's okay if that one disappeared. But I am not getting my vlogs back, which really, really sucks. It sucks a lot and I think I'm feeling better about it because I've had more time to kind of sit with it. It was really, really frustrating, but the call, the call explained a lot of the reason why I couldn't get my vlogs. And so the whole thing that we were harping on was the fact that there was proof that the videos were up well within their like 30 day data retention policy process. And there was a specific day in which they switched from private to deleted. And there's a simple answer for that. And also if you wanna speculate that this is like all a load of bull and it's not true or whatever, that's fine, you can do that. I. I'm so tired and I'm so exhausted with dealing with all of this stuff. And it's been such a toll on my mental health, especially like, ugh, don't get it. I have to be okay with the fact that I lost my vlog. Like I have to be okay with it because I need to move on. If I just try and find all of these other like loopholes and things like that, like it's exhausting. Like I, I need to start the process of getting over it and being okay. So the reasoning behind it is the fact that it just didn't update on the right day. And they couldn't tell me, Claire and Walter on the phone, what day the vlogs had been deleted because they didn't have access. They didn't have that level of like, kind of want to make it sound like the White House, but like that security clearance or access. And even the person I talked to who's incredibly high up at YouTube, they had to go ask somebody who's really high up in the tech spot to specifically go in and figure that out. And the day that my videos were deleted, was the day that my channel got hacked. Their video count uploader, that's not something that updates regularly. It takes a little while before it reflects that. And that was the answer that I was given as to why I didn't get my videos back because it had been more than 30 days. And those loopholes that we had found in the 30 day process and all of that sort of stuff, they pointed out, yeah, we're all valid and all really great arguments, but it doesn't change the fact that those videos are gone. And they were like, if we had them, we would give them to you. That is such a fantastic white horse, like knight in shining armor story of being able to really clear our name and make us look a lot better. And there's no reason why we wouldn't give them to you at this point. Like the videos have blown up. Everybody's talking about them. It's caused quite the fuss in the office. And there's no reason like we wouldn't just keep them from you because it makes us look worse for the fact that we can't give them back. I don't have my videos. And I know the other reason why, for me at least, that I'm becoming more okay with it is the fact that Krista, who I mentioned in part two, who is someone who saw my video and ended up making a whole Google doc of all of my playable videos from the way, way back, like web archives. So I've been downloading a bunch of old vlogs. It's not all of them, but it's something getting my channel back. So if you haven't seen, or maybe you have, and you're just not uh, super quick uh, or privileged to my sense of humor and you've been like, oh Megan, Alex is a real person and they've hacked your channel. I have my vlog channel back. It was transferred back over to me. I wanted the video. I didn't really care about the channel, but at the end of the day, if I'm not gonna get the videos, I'm not just gonna let Beauty Dior have the channel. So I took the channel back and there's just no videos there. So if you guys would be interested um, in me uploading some of the vlogs that I have from like the Way Way Back Machine that I've been able to download, let me know. And please don't ask for all of my nose job vlog because I don't have all of them. I can give you some, but I don't have all as of now. Lily's gonna look back in her old hard drives because she edited a bunch of those. We've been friends for a very long time. This situation really sucked. It really, really, really sucked. But I, for my own peace of mind, I need to find the good in it and I need to find the purpose and the use for all of it. Otherwise, I will just like become a puddle and just a soppy mess. It sucks, but this had to happen. This is how holes are found in systems. This is how problems are ironed out, all of those things. And it just so happened that it happened to me. And it's happened to smaller creators before, but I was the biggest channel it had happened to. As much as it sucks and I wish it didn't happen to me, I would rather it happen to me than somebody else who it's their entire livelihood and it's all of their videos that they've worked so hard on, on their main channel, all of that stuff. If it didn't happen to me or another creator at my size, it would have just kept happening to smaller creators and it wouldn't have been alerted by the right people because it's such a big company. But yeah, it's the reason why Claire and Walter are like, oh, we just found out about this and they're just understanding that now. But I mean, from what I've been told, everyone at YouTube knows me 
well now and they might be scared some might be afraid <laughs> Again, I just have to find some meaning and some purpose in this. And the purpose and the meaning is the fact that from what I've been told, the whole system is going to change. The whole process is going to change. And I don't work there. I don't know that for sure, but I'm choosing, <laughs> I'm choosing to believe that because I really want to. I don't want you to crash and burn and I don't want to take them to court. And I don't want to do any of that stuff because like, I love this. I have been at this since I was 16. This has been a part of my life for 10 years. I I don't know, I'm not trying to expose it and then like walk away. I don't want to walk away from this platform. I just want this platform to do better. So like taking them down isn't my goal. My goal is to be like, hey, here are the issues. Let's solve them together. And again, from what I've been told, that's going to happen. And yeah, I am choosing to believe them even though they failed me before with everything that happened, but I just, I have to. Otherwise it's gonna make me go insane. And also, if it doesn't change, I'm gonna make a fuss. Don't underestimate how annoying I am. I will still be all about that and trying to fix this and solve this with them. I'd rather help them succeed and watch them succeed than try and take them down because that also doesn't help me either. I know a lot of people really wanted me to sue and take them to court and all of that sort of stuff. And sure, I could. I would just need to suddenly stumble upon like national treasure, like all of the treasure from all of the movies in order to afford that. And it just be incredibly expensive. And at the end of the day, it wouldn't get my videos back. I'd rather solve solve this as a collective versus force them to in court. I'm sure this wasn't as satisfying to a lot of you and you want more answers. You don't feel vindicated. You don't feel like you got closure and there's still all of that there, but I need to take care of me and I need to be done with this and I need to move on and I need to have this be the conclusion because otherwise I will go insane. I do want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who watched my video who helped me, who helped contribute to the Google Doc of finding all of my playable videos, who were sending me screenshots. It felt like you were doing all of this work for me and helping me so much. And so many of you who are doing that were people who've never watched my videos before, which is so fantastic and so nice. And the amount of hours that people put in who don't even know me to try and help me was so amazing. And I'm so thankful for all of this. And I think that's also a huge reason why I'm walking away from the situation and I'm okay okay is because I feel so, I don't know, I don't want to say taken care of, but I feel, I feel so supported through all of this that you guys have made all of this so much easier than it would have been if I was just I don't know, I don't feel like I was really going through all of it alone. So thank you everybody, whether you just like watched it or commented it or sent it to somebody, just thank you. All the creators who helped me. I also really wanna thank the person that I talked to from YouTube, which <laughs> they're sounding really ominous because I'm not disclosing who they were, for really concluding this story for me and answering those questions and making me not feel insane and like I was being gaslit. But yeah, that's, that's it for this. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna subscribe, to me if you haven't go for it and if you want to follow me on Instagram I would really appreciate it I would also really appreciate it if you pre-ordered my book this is my book it's called you're not special it comes out on May 5th and you can also get an audio version a digital version and I also just read the audiobook and it's so funny because in the book I make and I wrote this book obviously before all this hacking stuff I make a joke in it about how like I've never gotten hacked before and I was like and finally, I hope you all are staying healthy and staying safe and staying inside. If you are an essential worker, you work at a grocery store, daycare, law enforcement, literally all of those fantastic places, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. It's a really crazy and super, super scary time, but you are so appreciated. And I'm sending well wishes to everybody, whether you're dealing with the physical effects of Corona, if it's a family member, if it's you, or also even just like the mental health aspects of staying inside and feeling cooped up and trapped. I totally get it. And I I totally feel for you and sending you all so much love and support and yeah stay healthy stay safe and I hope you don't get hacked <laughs> bye guys <laughs>